All right, so here we got a nice little self-contained unit to troubleshoot and figure out what's wrong with it. So here's what I got for the work order. The cooler temp is reading 50, inside sushi on left wall closest to meal simple. So this is the details they give me, the asset number. So I match that right here and the model number right there and this is the one stick my probe in it and well the food is at 49 7 6 this unit's barely holding in the 40s oh we got ice build up up there too looks like it's probably going to be a refrigerant or restriction issue so I'm gonna get started first. I'm gonna take this back cover off, and I'm probably gonna take all the food out because I've got to take this unit completely apart to get in there and defrost it. So then, also, I can tell I can notice that your coil here is dirty. On these little self-contained units, that are those dirty coils can present a real big problem. And this back panel comes off just by taking off these screws and then you can access the whole condenser skid right there. So, I'm gonna take all this product out, put it on this cart, and roll it into the walk-in. And you gotta walk in right here. And just like that's good. Okay, now I got an empty cooler. Now these ones come apart pretty simply. All right, yeah, so these types of true coolers with this type of top, I think it's called a worktop unit. If you look underneath here, you've got screw right here, screw right here, screw right there, and another one. So four screws that hold this down, they go, they go through here, they hold the top panel down, and then you lift up on this, and I believe you push it backwards, and then it, it slides off, kind of hooks in from the back. So I already know that the unit is not working because of that ice buildup right there. Now most of the time, in all the years I've been doing this, whenever I see ice buildup that's just in one spot like that, on one part of the coil, it usually means, almost every time it means, that there's something wrong with the way the refrigerant is flowing through the circuit. There could be a restriction, or it could be low on refrigerant. So, Right off the bat, I'm gonna take this cover off. That way I can access that. Okay, so I've got my four screws out, or out far enough, to where the top will come off. Now, it's important to note that these front doors are attached to this top panel. And we lift off this top panel, we need to take the door off of it first. So, I've got four screws right there, that are on, that are three eighths, two over here, two over there. All right, so one, then once you pop out the two screws, the door pulls out forward, and then you lift it up from the bottom. off so see our ice formation is just limited to right here on this side this is going to be where the where the refrigerant is feeding into it it's so low on refrigerant that it's barely able to freeze up right there but this one is r290 so it's a little different than the 134a units
So I need to get rid of this ice so I can get these panels off. So I'm just going to use some hot water. Got our hot water running. And wait for it to get hot. And luckily we happen to have floor drains. So we can just pour the water in here and let it roll out the cooler and down the floor. The only way to remove ice is with hot water. Never try to bang it or pound it. Hot water, every time. I'm gonna take these panels all off and suppose what's underneath. So I'm starting by taking these screws off, both sides and that center one. Then I'll take these four out, pull the fan out, and then I'll and then I'll pull these ones off. And I expected I'd have more ice under here, so all well, this is just another big chunk of ice and it uh, has that wire pretty good, so gotta be careful not to hurt the wire. So you see these types of little seal tight whatever the hell they're called just squeeze them and then in most cases you can in most cases you can lift them right up but I think the ice is preventing so more water Screw right here that I didn't see is hiding from me. That's what was holding it together, not the wire. And I keep all my screws, or I try to. I learned this over the years. Keep all my stuff, all my little screws together in one little spot like that. That way I have them all at the end. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, now, now we can see what's going on better. this and get it out. See if I can get it back down. Oh, that was pretty now I can help it.
Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, whenever you have ice formation like that, where the refrigerant goes in and it's isolated to just this one location right here, in this case, we had that big ice blob right here, which is on the coiled up part of the cap tube. So we are frosting right here in the cap tube. So we don't have liquid. We actually have refrigerant that is barely hardly any liquid at all, but it's causing frost and it's, it's freezing up right here instead of the entire coil. So it's very low on refrigerant. And what we need to do is find the leak. But these systems, are these R290 systems, they don't, uh, they don't have service ports to where you can just check the refrigerant. They hold very little charge of that R290, which is like propane, it's really flammable. But it should have some pressure in it. So I'm gonna take this off, look at the rest of it, and then I'll get my uh, bubble spray and try to find the leak. All right, so then once you get the two screws, it should be three screws off the top, and then you get those three screws out, you just uh, you just pop it out like this. It looks like this panel has never been removed. The compressor should be hot, being low on refrigerant like that. It's not too hot. I have had it off for a few minutes, but... Uh, our condenser coil, though, is extremely dirty and we're going to have to recommend to them to get that cleaned along with uh, whatever we find leaking here today. So yeah, as you can see, there's no uh, no service ports on it. Now we can add service ports to it, you know, little, um, little saddle valve things. We can add those to it. This would be where we put the one for the liquid and this would be the one where we put the one for the suction. But I'm not going to do that. I know it has some pressure in it because if it didn't have pressure in it, then it wouldn't have been frosting like we had here. So I'm going to get my bubble spray and I'm going to spray all these little spots right here and hopefully find a leak. All right, so I got the big blue. Hopefully there's enough pressure in there to where we can uh, find the leak. So this is going to be my starting point right here. This is going to be my favorite spot. I'm hoping to find it right here where the paint is coming off. I'm going to spray it on there and hope that we can find it. So it's not looking too promising right now on finding the leak with the amount of pressure that it has in it and given how small the leak is. It does not look very likely that I'm going to be able to find it. Now, I may be seeing something interesting occurring right here. I'm not sure. I might have to watch it. Yeah, right there. Let me see where it actually. So, right there, we have new bubbles appearing and forming this stream that goes right through there. It's a little like a little river of bubbles. It just keeps coming, keeps coming. That's the leak. And there's probably others around this whole big circle thing. But I've confirmed that we have at least one leak on the coiled up capillary tubes of this R290 system. And it is right there on the bottom where I just showed you. Let me see. Yep. Yep. Right there. Let's double confirm. Let's watch other ones appear.
Now it's one thing for the bubbles to come down from what sprays out of the nozzle, but we have actual, let's see when I zoom in like that, the camera doesn't focus as good. We have actual bubbles here appearing. They're microscopic in size. But they are appearing. They're not just flowing down from above. They are appearing. So, that's how you do it. Leak confirmed. So, overall, we need to submit a quote to the store. The quote will include ordering and replacing this for that model number and serial number. It might be under warranty. I don't know. I have to check that model, that serial number to see if it's under warranty, which True has a uh, website you can do that on. We must also include the quote that this needs to be cleaned, thoroughly cleaned. We're going to have to add service valves to put it in there. We got to add refrigerant and we got to replace this dryer. I think that's part number SUD 111 if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, we can address the leak and it's the only way that uh, the store and the EPA will allow us to move forward. So there you have it. So I'm going to put it back together. Tell the manager not to put anything else in it and we'll get them that quote. Alright, and that's going to wrap it up for this video, so I hope you guys, uh, if you watched it all the way to the end of this long, thanks. And, uh, means you're really getting something from this content. Appreciate you watching.